on the topic of COVID-19, much emphasis in the press has been placed on a, a botched response uh, from the Trump administration quite early on. What is your take on this, and where do we go from here? If you believe the reports coming from his people that national security knew and put in his briefings about the coronavirus in uh, China back in like November of last year. And they really moved it to the front burner come the first part of January, and he didn't want to hear about it. And then he says, well, it's one person, and maybe it'll go to five, and then it'll just miraculously go away. Yeah, tell that to the 133-plus thousand people who have died in this country alone. Uh, the numbers are skyrocketing again because some states decided that they didn't have to follow science and data. So are, are you in favor of another shutdown if the disease spikes, as it seems to be doing right now? Or do you feel that we have to just kind of adapt to a new way of doing things? I can tell you when I go out of my house, I have a mask on. Because that's the state ruling right now. Yeah. Governor Northam said, if you're out in public, you got a mask on. Yeah. Why? It's not because I have COVID, but I might. It's not that you have COVID, but you might. Right. But if we both have masks on, the transmission of that disease drops to 3%. Mm -hmm. That's data. Yeah. So do you base it on, it's going to go away, or do you base it on this is how it's transmitted, and this is what we need to do. Six feet apart, minimal. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Wear a mask. Is that so hard to protect yourself or your granny or your aunt and uncle or your parents? No, it shouldn't be. It should not be an issue. But groups have turned it into a First Amendment issue, and it's not a First Amendment issue. It is a matter of life and death. Right. It's a, it's a and whether or not issue. you live or you die depends on a lot of things. You don't know that the person that you're coughing on doesn't have a child who has major health issues. They're recovering from cancer. They're uh, immune suppressed. And... It is not your right to infringe upon my rights. Your rights end where my rights begin, and my right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness starts with uh, you not infecting me with a virus that we know is going to kill people who have uh, autoimmune issues, other health issues. So am I in favor of a sh another shutdown? I think that some states, I found a pathway. They were tough in the beginning. And I love uh, Cuomo, oh, yeah. Andrew Cuomo. Mm -hmm. he, is, he is, I would listen to him before I would listen to the dunce on the White House. <laughs> when it comes to coronavirus and how to handle it, because he handled it. I would listen to Dr. Fauci. I sort of listened to Dr. Bricks, but she kind of sold her soul there for a while and I, I had a little problem with her bowing down to the science deniers the data deniers mm. uh, yeah Dr. Fauci said originally yeah, you don't need to wear masks well at the time we didn't think we had to as more data has come in then we've changed how we have to handle it and I mean, this is a deadly disease. It rivals the Spanish flu. Yes. From 
that the disease has been politicized by the right and or left? I think there are those who would say yes. I personally think that there are people in authority who follow anything that comes out of the uh, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue to a T because they're afraid to go out on their own because they might lose their election or someone in their, their state may lose their Senate seat or their congressional seat. And I think we know what color I'm talking about. In general, most of the people in most of the governors and mayors who are lean towards the blue, so to speak, are following the science. It's not because they're smarter. There are people in the Republican Party that are going, "Ah, no, we're not going to any convention. This is too dangerous. So is it politicized? Maybe some, but mostly it's politicized by the people who want to hold on to their seats or hold on to their positions at all costs. And they'll say anything that the emperor who has no clothes, he will tell them, they will tell him that his new clothes look gorgeous. Right, right. And we all know that fairy tale. It worked real well. (laughs) Not. So we're going to we're going to take it up a notch now for the second half of the program and move into some even more incendiary questions and I'm sure some real straight talk from Dr. Tabor. Um, in the midst 
of the coronavirus pandemic, George Floyd was murdered by a Minneapolis police officer in cold blood. Now, this action has led to a social uprising, uh, social unrest, however you want to term it, whatever you want to describe it as, but many news networks have shied away from using the term rioting in favor of more benign terms like protesting, which of course there is plenty of peaceful protesting. Uh, do you believe that there's a clear-cut difference though between rioting and protesting? If the same behavior was happening in support of, let's say, the NRA or pro-life causes, would the media be saying the same thing? And is the mainstream media a problem in 2020? George Floyd was not the first. He was the tipping point, the straw that broke the camel's back. It was just one bridge too far. Yep. And in this age, this is something teachers have learned. Everybody's got a cell phone, and everybody's a news director with a camera. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to be very, very exact about what you're doing. I watched that. I cried over that. Oh, yeah. It was horrible. It was but I also cried over Breonna Taylor in, in Louisville. She still hasn't gotten justice. She was killed in her own house. Right. So, on a no-knock warrant delivered to the wrong address. Really. I think that when you look at the difference, there is protesting. There is walking down the street with a sign that says Black Lives Matter. And they do. Yes. It goes to the parable of the 99 and the 1. Your one sheep is lost. You leave your flock and go find the one and bring them back. Or your neighborhood, there's a house on fire. All the rest of the houses are fine, but one house is on fire. Where does the fire truck go? It goes to put out the fire at that one house. This is Black Lives Matter. Right. Because it, it really is more than just Black Lives Matter. Black, brown, red all matter as persons of color because they all have been basically profiled yes. and this was a case of profiling and making up terms or whatever but what ensued with the protest against what happened to George Floyd in Minneapolis they found that there were outside agitators being brought in to intermingle with the peaceful protesters that then turned into the violent uh, burn the house down kind of looting and so forth. When peaceful protests turn into vandalism, looting and violence, the message of that protest gets lost. And unfortunately, anyone can join a protest and their agenda may not be the same as the organizer. It's up to people to realize that not every protest is going to be a riot and not every riot is a protest. Right. You just have to be able to differentiate between the things and know what's going on. If the same behavior was happening in support of the NRA or pro-life causes, well, would the media be saying the same thing? Maybe not, but then is it the same thing? I have a right to own a gun. I have a right to be a member of the NRA. That is a choice. I have a choice to be pro-life or pro-abortion. I don't have a, a choice of being black, Latina, Native American. I don't have that choice. The media should be saying things. But, and are they a prob the problem? I don't think so. Because if they had been a problem, no one would have seen the Federal Park Police Force marching through Lafayette Park, literally punching out an Australian videographer and 
tear gassing the reporter. Right. It was caught on camera by another media outlet. And that to me was, it was totally disgusting. And then to show up at the Episcopal Church and stand there, I know it wasn't a yeah. photo op. No, I'm done. The, the photo op. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> mainstream media is not the problem. They're just shining the light on what the problem really is. Now, yeah. talking heads may be a problem because I did hear at least one talking head trying to make someone say something that it wasn't. Yeah. That, so that does happen. I lost all respect for that particular person. But let's say he was on CNN. Right. I know who you mean. Now, some, <laughs> some, some have said that um, Black Lives Matter has been hijacked by mostly white young people with a far left agenda. Now, that's up for debate, of course, but do you believe that Black Lives Matter is being used to advance far left ideologies like socialism and even communism? From my understanding, the Black Lives Matter movement is shedding light on um, racial profiling on how everything in this country has revolved around the uh, European I am a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant and yes I while I did not grow up with a great amount of privilege because my father was in the Navy and he was an enlisted man who was a high school dropout. There was no such thing as white privilege in that respect. We worked for everything, but the fact that I was white meant I could walk down the street and no one was gonna mess with me. It's, it's a shame to say that. I feel horrible that people cannot walk from point A to point B without being beat up or killed or jogging down the street because, oh, you might have robbed somebody. Really? Where am I hiding what I'm robbing if I'm in my jogging shorts without a shirt? Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm asleep in my bed. You break in and you kill me. Uh, what was I doing? I was sleeping and I was an EMT who served the public as a first responder. Yep. No. Um, I don't think there's... The, the message, the immediate message of Black Lives Matter is important because it makes us focus on what we really have done to people, even though we say they're free, are they? And I may lose a few friends over this, but hey, you've got to look at life from somebody else's shoes. Then walk in them. You won't like it. Yeah. So, if the extremists are getting into the protests and hijacking the uh, message, I don't, I have not really seen that much of it. They're, you know, they're looking at reforming the police department. They used the wrong term. They used the term defunding. They should have said reforming. Because they don't want to do away with it. And the extremists are such a small minority. It's just like the... There's not a lot of Antifa that's involved with the Black Lives Matter. Just like on the opposite end of the spectrum, we know what the other people are. Right. And... They're not us either. They're, they are not the mainstream American person. No, They're well, a very small minority. Yeah, the fringe the fringe extremists on either side. That sometimes yes. uh, an entire party will get judged by its most extreme faction, unfortunately. That does that does happen. But, um, and it, I, I see that possibly happening with the Democratic Party, but there are enough level-headed people who... Um, firmly believe that 
we need a more centrist, forgiving, loving country. Right, which harkens back to the question that you addressed earlier about Biden and his appealing to centrists and so forth. But speaking of Biden, if elected president, many have suggested that he could have a hard time maintaining a more centrist government amidst the uh, the growing extremism of his own party, as we're, we're describing. Um, so others have even posited the theory that a coup could very easily become a reality in which we would see Biden relieved of his duties. This could officially place socialists in power in the United States. Um, now, this this could very well be a far-fetched theory, but you know that's the purpose of this show is for you to take a crack at at all sides. Um, <laughs> so let's say this hypothetically did happen. Um, would you rather have? a socialist Biden or Biden VP presidency or a capitalist Trump presidency? How's that for a good question? (laughs) (laughs) Tough choices, huh? (laughs) Tough choices. Well, first off, if you have another Trump presidency, it's not going to be a capitalist. It's going to be put the money in my pocket, which is what it's already been. It's going to be... uh, despotic reign of terror because we know as soon as he gets a chance he goes after anyone he thinks has slighted him so this country will fall into total ruin I'm sorry I would rather have a socialist Biden than a capitalist Trump because he's going to be a despotic ruler a dictator he already is but I mean it's going to be worse do you think that if if there were hypothetically a socialist Biden presidency, do you think that it would be possible for the country to rebound back to capitalism from that, or do you think we would be stuck with socialism for uh, the foreseeable future? I really believe that if we went all the way to the left, socialism that there would eventually be a pendulum that's going to swing all the way back to the center and then to the far right. I mean, we're right now, we're in the far right of idiocy. We've got to, you know, we're trying to get that pendulum to stop in the middle. Right. If it went all the way to the left, I think eventually it would be brought back into line. 